Hi guys, good morning. It's Jennifer Ho. Hope you guys are all doing doing well. It's Wednesday morning, which means it's real estate chat with me. So believe it or not, today is our 98th episode for real estate chat. And we're going to talk about, you know, diving into the real estate world and exploring for key property types. You may ask why am I discussing about this it's because a lot of people right now with high interest rates and with not knowing what's going to happen with the in, um, stock market and everything people are still looking into investing in real estate and most people when they think of real estate all they know is either single family condo residential some of you may know a uh, commercial part of it, but the, believe it or not, there are four different property types that one may invest in. Although the number four one, the fourth one, I don't think it's something that most people would invest to and you know will, will invest in because of the, uh, the kind of property they are. So before we go, um, anyway, so we are going to proceed diving into uh the world of real estate exploring four different types of property and anyone can guess which one is the first one and the most popular one well the first one is something that everyone knows about it's basically the residential real estate and this is probably uh the most common and the first thing that comes to people's mind is actually basically single family home condominium townhouses or even multifamily house basically it's like pretty much what everyone knows it this category covers where people live in so that's why it's called residential now whether it's a starter home a mansion or anything in between this is basically where people live in so either as a tenant or as a homeowner this is one of the most popular or people that know the most it's basically residential real estate the second type of real estate as you know is the commercial real estate this sector basically is all about the workplace think of an office building a co-working spaces or even some multifamily dwellings yes multifamily can be considered both residential or commercial property depending on how many units there are for example, like a, an apartment building is actually considered as a commercial property and not a residential home, even if people live in it. So you have residential real estate, which is where people live in. You have commercial real estate, which is where the workplace is, the office, office buildings. And the third one basically is the industrial real estate. These are the properties designated for producing or storing goods. For example, warehouses, factories, or distribution center, like let's say an Amazon distribution center. These fall into the industrial type of real estate. Now, the last real estate uh, type is basically retail, uh, which is also malls, shopping centers, um, you know where goods are basically being sold um sorry i got distracted there hey thank you for joining so to recap you have residential which is where people live in commercial industrial i just saw someone text me can you talk further about an industrial so basically industrial property think of let's say basically a warehouse self-storage or like uh factories let's say um like a bakery that's producing all these different, uh, not just a small bakery, but big producing like Arnold's Bakery and all those things. Those are fact con considered industrial real estate because they are fa uh, factories or distribution centers, as what I said earlier. Um, believe it or not, someone actually just messaged me is uh, like Westie Storage, is that considered as an industrial real estate? I would say yes. Uh, as you know, there are a lot of different self-storage. I do know of a couple of investors who are looking into investing into uh, self-storage because they feel like there's not enough um, availability or there's not enough. They think there's a market for it. 
And then the retail is uh, the re retail real estate is basically shopping malls, um, shopping centers, boutiques, and place where goods are sold. So there are different kinds of uh, retail real estate. You could have like the big mall, like a super mall or something like, like Westchester Mall, for example, or like you have small boutiques. Like for example, if you go to Greenwich, we have Greenwich Avenue, where you have small uh, mom and pop stores that sells goods. So those are also considered as real estate, um, um, retail real estate. Now, if you might ask, or I got, there's so many messages, I'm doing two phones at the same time and I'm getting messages on both. So the thing is like, why am I discussing um, the four key property types is because I have been, uh, I've gotten a couple of people who wanted to invest in real estate and they feel like because there's really not much on the residential side, they wanted to know what the options are, other options in investing in real estate. And the thing is like, you know, retail right now is hurting because a lot of people are doing online um, shopping. But at the same time, I truly believe if you are a small boutique, as long as you have the option of allowing your uh prospective buyers be able to shop online, I think you'll be fine. But you know, the reason I wanted to talk about this, I have certain investors who basically are looking into, since there's really not much on residential, I have like all different types of new investors. I have one who basically wanted to purchase like a couple of like one or two condos, one per each child so that you know, if they decide to move into those uh, condos, it's something that, you know, they would do for them. But in the meantime, it's something that's generating income for them. And, you know, I've been asked, so is it a good idea to do it considering interest rates are high? For some people, it actually something that's not a problem as what you when you heard Jamie was talking about last time, is like a parent could actually co-sign uh, hey Mona, so uh, a pair could actually co-sign uh, on a loan in purchasing something for their children. And so I, because of that, I've had a couple of people calling me, asking me into looking into purchasing a condo for their children here in Connecticut. And so that's why I decided to do this, uh, this segment. So you know, residential, as I said, is still very common because I think, hey, Billy, I miss dancing with you. So investing in the condo, I think for a lot of people, especially if you're a first time investor, is something that a lot of people are, easy, you know, it's easy. I miss you, uh, Billy. Um, it's easy for them to start with in investing because it's easy to manage. Now, for some people who are a lot more used to investing, they like to look into a commercial real estate. Mind you, some commercial real estate could actually be a mixed use where you have retail on the first floor and then residential on the second and third floor. And that's something we do have quite a bit here on Greenwich Avenue. So a lot of, um, hi Steve, thanks for uh, joining. So, so some people who are more advanced in investing would not, would not just be happy or limiting their investment on just residential. They do a commercial where they could have a combination of both commercial real estate, which is the retail part on the first floor and residential on top. Now, the third type, the third property, which is the industrial real estate, it's not something that a lot of people invest in because unless the only people that I've dealt with that are looking to investing on the industrial side, as what I mentioned earlier, is basically more on the uh, purchasing a building and making it into a storage unit because they feel like a lot of people now are downsizing. And what happens when people who used to live in a 6,000 square foot home and now downsizing to a 2,000 square foot condo, they, have to, they need a place to store their products and so storage unit is something, interestingly enough, people are still looking into investing. For them, it's not a lot of um, the, the, the client that I've uh, talked to, they are interested in doing this um, 
a warehouse or not really a warehouse, like a storage unit, because for them, it's basically low maintenance. All you need is like a temperature control. You have a building, each unit is like assigned like a space. And I guess it depends on how, you know, how big the size is. Like you, I think you could, I think one unit can cost you as, as slow as $300 a month. So imagine having a hundred of that. So that's why I have certain investors who are looking into just doing a storage unit, which is considered as the industrial style side of real estate. Now on the retail side, I mentioned earlier, a lot of people are, you know, still want to invest in commercial, but a lot of them are worried because of what's going on with retail. A lot of retail stores are actually hurting and some of them are closing like Target are closing and all that, like all the malls. And the thing is, but if you find what my investors are looking into is actually having, as I said, a mixed use, commercial where you have retail in the bottom and residential on top that way you will always have the res residential side which most of the time is very uh, depending on the location it's 99 percent of the time depending on location is actually fully rented and now with that you could have that support like pretty much either the mortgage or the maintenance of the property so if you're thinking of investing in real estate, whether in a residential, commercial, industrial, or, or, or retail, understanding these different categories is, is a good way to start. It's a foundation of the real estate world, especially if you're thinking of investing, because each has its unique benefits and challenges. So if any of you are thinking of investing or if you just want to, uh, if you have questions when it comes to all these different types of real estate, either you're thinking of purchasing one to live in or purchasing two to live in one and basically in, you know, rent out the other to basically help you with uh, added income, definitely give me a call. I have been doing this for 20 years now and I have been doing a lot more commercial real estate. I am now certified in commercial and investment real estate, which I find very interesting. And a lot of people now are definitely looking into it, especially with the, the rents going up. It's still quite high. A lot of people are now purchasing. A lot of moms or families that I know uh, whose children work in New York City are now looking into purchasing it instead of like for them, instead of paying three, $4,000 on a rental, they prefer to purchase something and that three, four, three or $4,000 is now used to pay on a mortgage, which they eventually in long term becomes an investment. And you know, it's kind of like a good way to start. Anyway, thank you guys for joining. It's a short video. I, if you have any questions, thank you for all of you who gave me the idea and asked me to like talk more about the different types of real estate because you're thinking of, uh, thinking of investing or wanting to learn more about it. If you have any other questions, definitely give me a call. And for those of you who sent questions to Jamie, I'll definitely give her a call and send it to her. And I always appreciate your support. I'll see you guys next week. Uh, in two weeks time, I'm going to have my hundred episode. If you guys have any idea or any suggestions on who you want me to interview, feel free to let me know who you want. Anyway, take care guys. Again, thank you. I miss all of you and I enjoy, and I am grateful for all your support. I'll see you guys next week. Take care guys. Enjoy your day. Bye.